Greetings and welcome to worship with the Lakeshore Church in St. Clair Shores, Michigan, a caring, growing, and serving church. My name is Pastor Adam, and it's my pleasure to welcome you and to thank you for being a part of our worship here today. I want to let you know that, that you, your presence with us is a blessing and that we count you a part of our church community just by the nature of you uh, being with us and participating with us today. Uh, please uh, stay connected with us. Uh, keep connected with us. Uh, we would love to hear from you as uh, much as we hope you want to hear from us. If you are visiting with us today, a very special welcome to you. Thanks for being with us. Uh, you're in store for a great worship because today we begin a new series and it's called The Good and the Beautiful Community. We're going to be celebrating what it means here to be the church in the next six weeks. Thanks for being with us. Let's let our morning worship now begin. Well, good morning, church. It's great to be here gathered with you this morning. Why don't you join us in worship as we just continue to sing and worship our Lord this morning, all right? This one's called Glorious Day. And I was buried beneath my shame. Church. 
I'm Pastor Kevin Rogers from New Song Church in Windsor, and your reading for today is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. This is the word of the Lord. If you asked Katie's mother, she raised her daughter in faith. But Katie didn't agree. What are you talking about, Mom? You never even took me to church. But faith was a part of our family, she said. Katie's mother was remembering all the trips they took out into God's beautiful creation, the Grand Canyon, Yosemite, the vistas and the sunsets, real encounters with God. Those were spiritual moments, she said. God was there. Well, maybe for you, Mom, but you never even talked about that. I didn't know you found God in those moments. Of course, they, they also did some other things, like they said prayers at dinner time and before bed. Her mother was pressing her. How could you say I didn't raise you in faith? There was no community, Mom. I needed a church. Katie became one of my friends through the university church, uh, the college campus ministry that the two of us were a part of. It was a diverse group. We had people in that group that were uh, people who grew up in church as well as people who didn't grow up in church. We, we had people of all different kinds of denominational backgrounds, Presbyterians, Methodists, Pentecostals, Church of God. Even a few Catholics were among us. Uh, there were denominations that were represented that I had never even heard of before college. We had black and white. We had Americans as well as international students. We, we had males and females, Democrats, Republicans, those who were theologically conservative as well as those who held a progressive faith. We were a good and beautiful community, a place where we encountered God and we sought to serve and witness to the gospel right on our campus. We did that together. You see, you, you may be able to believe in God by yourself, but, but you can't live the Christian life without other people. Today, we're beginning a new series. It's called The Good and Beautiful Community. And before we get any farther in this, I want to tell you that this series, it's not original to me. As I'm preaching here over these next six weeks, it's from content that's written by James Brian Smith. This whole series, it's based on a book of the same name. Here it is. It's the good and beautiful community. It's his work that we're lifting up. We're going to delve into it on Sunday mornings, uh, many of you in small groups throughout the week, and then through our intentional Christian practice. We chose this book because we want to celebrate being the church. We, we want to celebrate what it means to be a part of the community. You see, it's not just about coming and getting a message every week. Uh, that's something you can do on your own. <laughs> you can do that online. You can do it by coming to the church. You, you have 100,000 or more sermons that, that are there online every week from churches across America. I, I want to celebrate the community with you. And we're going to do that here over these uh, next six weeks. You know, when I uh, was growing up, I thought of church just as another activity. It's an activity that I uh, put on my resume. <laughs> yeah, and yes, uh, I was a part of church growing up. I was the president of my youth group. That was right there on my resume. I just thought of it as, as any other activity. But church isn't just another activity. It's, 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 it's who we are. 
as Christians, it, it's, it's holistic to our lives. Now, there's a false narrative out there. It's a false narrative that just says that, hey, Christians are, are the same as everybody else. We're no different. And, it, and in some ways, I, I understand that because in some ways we see that. I mean, scandals happen in the church as surely as they happen outside of the church. Uh, divorce rates, they're the same between Christians and non-Christians alike. But even if in many ways Christians and non-Christians are the same, we ought to be different. And the truth is, we often are different. I was walking out of the gym uh, one day so, so this story I'm about to tell must be from a few years ago because I haven't been to the gym since we had our third kid. Uh, but I remember this, this day when I was walking out of the gym and striking up a conversation with a complete stranger on my way out. You know, we got to our cars and, and instead of parting ways, we, we just kept talking for a couple more minutes. And then suddenly she stopped me and she said, you're a Christian, aren't you? Oh, little did she know that uh, I'm a pastor. But when she found out, she just went on and on saying, I knew it, I knew it. How did you know, I asked. I forget exactly what she said, but I remember her saying, you're different. You're just different. From the moment you held the door for me, I could tell you were different. Now, non-Christians hold the door for strangers too. (laughs) Uh, People who hold the door, that doesn't mean they're Christian. And not every Christian might hold the door for you. But one thing that is true is that if you are Christian, you ought to be different. 1 Peter 2.9, from the King James Version this time it reads, "But, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. A peculiar people. It's basically what it means to be different, isn't it? To be peculiar Now, if you look up the word peculiar, you know what it means, right? It means you're weird. Yeah, different, strange, weird. I guess that person was calling me weird outside the gym that day. We're meant to be a people who are peculiar. Meaning we're, we're, we're set apart, we're a little bit different than others who are in the world. Sure, we're still citizens of this world, but we also claim a citizenship in a different world. We're called not to live simply in obedience to the laws of this land, but to a higher set of laws. We choose to live as ones who are rich, even if we are poor. We choose to repay evil with good, to bless those who curse us, to show love in all things and to all people. We do good simply for the sake of doing good. All these things are peculiar things. And when we do them, it confuses people who are outside the church. We've talked about how it was Christians who ran toward those who were sick and dying during pandemics of the past. You may know the name Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He, because of his faith, returned to Nazi Germany to work against Hitler rather than stay here in the States at a plush teaching job. People thought he was crazy. William Penn chose to hang up his sword uh, and form Christian communities of peace during a time when everyone wore a sword around their waist. Christians have been known to do mind-boggling things, things that don't make sense to other people. Christians are a peculiar bunch. I'll never forget a conversation that I had with a New Testament scholar. She's a non-Christian who studies the New Testament. Uh, She loves and appreciates the New Testament, and she loves and appreciates Christians too. She told me how she respects Jesus and how she appreciates his teachings. Her name is Amy Jill Levine, and and she believes that most of his teachings are a pretty good way to live. When she was telling me this, I said, wait, most of his teachings? Which ones don't you believe in following? Well, really, it's just one, she said. That whole love your enemy thing, that, that doesn't make much sense to me. And then she added, and and I think it's kind of hard to forgive someone 77 times or 70 times 77 times. Okay, maybe that's two teachings there. Love is peculiar in a world that encourages us to look out for number one. Forgiveness is peculiar in a world that encourages us to seek vengeance when we've been wronged. 
Sure, we can see the benefit of loving and forgiving those who are close to us. That's what it means to be a family. But to love your enemies, to forgive someone who keeps wronging you over and over again, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. Why would anyone choose to do it? We Christians are peculiar if you go back to the word in 1 Peter 2, the Greek word uh, that we, we were translating as peculiar, it holds a conditional connotation. We haven't talked about it yet. And we're peculiar because we belong to God. We're bought, owned, a part of this family that has been brought together by Jesus Christ. Uh, this word holds a sense of belonging to. We're peculiar because, let's face it, we belong to a peculiar God. God is different than other gods, lowercase g. You just look back to Roman and Greek mythology. Those gods, they were venerated. They were worshipped during the time of Jesus. And, and truthfully, they look very much the same as other human beings. The Roman gods, they, they lie, they cheat, they murder, they steal, they get jealous and angry and vengeful. The Greek and Roman mythology make for some great stories. What these gods do, they, they, they look like us as human beings because they were created in the minds of human beings. They're conceived in a human image. But we didn't create God in our image. God created us in him, his image, and then God came to be with us in the person of Jesus. We know who God is, and we know who he is because of Jesus. And because we've seen Jesus, because we've seen God, we get to be like him too. We realize we are made in the image of the one who is Jesus. God is peculiar, and so we are peculiar too. John's first letter puts it like this. He says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone born of God knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This Jesus, he, he came and he loves us so much that he died for us and he chose death to give us life. It's a peculiar thing to have the God of the universe, our very creator, to come and allow us to put him to death. What kind of God would do this? What kind of a father, mistreated and abandoned by his son, would clothe him in the finest robe and throw a party for him upon his return? What kind of uh, employer gives a day's pay to a worker who's only worked an hour? Jesus told us these stories, and, and he died his death because this is who God is. He was showing us how God operates, and it's very peculiar. And yet, because this is what God does for us, we ought to love in a like manner. As we do so, as we both encounter God's love and then live in the way of love, our lives are transformed, and we belong to God, and we become this peculiar people, a peculiar people who love others even if they don't love us in return. Now, people with open hearts take notice. I, why do you think Christianity spread exponentially in the generations that followed Jesus' death and resurrection? When Jesus left the world, he, he didn't leave behind that many followers. I mean, how many were there, 12? You'd think after a generation or two, the movement would just die out, except it didn't. As people encountered the peculiar followers of Jesus, as they experienced their love, and discovered through the power of the Holy Spirit, the very love of God, they, through the Spirit, became a peculiar people themselves. What started as just 12 people locked in an upper room a few hundred years later became a movement over a million of people. And 100 years after that, in the year 350 AD, there were uh, an estimated uh, thir oh, th over 33 million Christians, which at that time represented more than the half of the world's population. You know, sometimes Christians look like everyone else, but we ought to be different. Sometimes the church it, looking like everybody else. Sometimes we're looking in uh, the, uh, the mirror and thinking that we don't have enough and we're living in scarcity, but actually it's when the church just stops worrying about themselves. They, they start giving their life away. It's when they're serving others, not themselves. That's when the church gets it right. That's when the church is the good and beautiful community. That's when we belong to God. It takes courage as Christians to live like this. It takes courage 
courage to live for others in our world today. It takes courage not to become complacent in a world whose problems are just overwhelming. It takes courage to to become maladjusted to things in our world that, that people have just so become accustomed to, things like greed and materialism and violence and, and racism and other forces in this world. We are peculiar because we say that those, th- th- those things we're not going to adjust to. Those, those are things that are not right with this world. This is not a part of what God wants and has for us. My friends, we are a peculiar people and we belong to God. I, I want to issue a challenge to you here in this week because, uh, because if you're part of a small group, you're going to be talking about this stuff. And, and if you're a part of a small group, you're going to be challenged to uh, enter into a Christian practice here this week. And, and if you're not part of a small group, I want to challenge you right now. The challenge is called the two-by-four. And this is what it is. The two-by-four is meant to help train our soul. It's to help us know that we belong to God as we belong uh, to to a people who are called to live peculiar lives. The two-by-four challenge is to spend two hours with God and to do four peculiar Christian things here in the week ahead. And since you've already been engaged in worship, you're well on your way toward that two hours. It's, oh, um, oh, you're, you're almost there. And, and the four peculiar acts, they don't have to be complicated. <laughs> it could be as simple as doing a small act of kindness for a stranger holding a door on the way out of the gym, or just taking a time to listen to someone, giving to someone in need, or m- maybe buying something for someone for, for, for no reason, or, or giving to this ministry. Uh, Maybe it's just paying more attention to your neighbor or coworker, giving them time that, that you otherwise wouldn't give them. I, I know that if you accept this challenge, you and the Holy Spirit will figure exactly what those four peculiar acts are. But my friends, let's, let's come together here and let's be the good and the beautiful community. Thanks be to God for bringing us together. Amen. Well, hey everyone, Pastor Kevin here with you this morning. And uh, as you just heard at the end of the message, Pastor Adam just issued a challenge to all of us. He challenged us to be a part of this two by four challenge. So Pastor Adam, yes, I accept that challenge. And now I'm challenging the rest of you as well to go ahead and accept this two by four challenge. What you're going to do is the next song that we are going to sing, there's going to be a QR code, one of those funky little black and white things, uh, on the screen as we're singing. And all you got to do is grab your phone, which which you probably have already, and and just scan that little QR code on this little page here. If you can see it or not, it's going to pop up uh, on that. All you've got to do is fill out a couple little questions there, and boom, you've told us that you are going to join us in this 2x4 challenge. And challenge in becoming peculiar people. Not the peculiar people that people think I am or that they may think you are already, but the peculiar people that we heard about in the message this morning and that Peter challenged us uh, to be in the Word of God and in the Scriptures because that's what this challenge is all about. That's what this whole message series is going to be about over the next few weeks. So uh, I encourage you to to not only enjoy this challenge, but if you haven't got yourself involved in a small group yet that's going to study this book uh, even more in depth, There's information on the screen right there. You can hit us up at connect at lakeshorechurch.com or uh, just, you know, text connect to the number that's on the screen there and we will do our best to get you plugged into a group right away. You can even throw it into the chat if you're on Facebook or YouTube right now and throw it in there and say, hey, I want to be a part of a small group. We'll get you connected. In fact, if you you want to uh, let us know that you're going to join the challenge, you can do that in the little chat box as well as we sing this next song. And, and the next song that we're gonna do is actually one that I wrote a couple years ago. And uh, probably gonna do it a couple times throughout this series uh, because in this passage from Peter, uh, he actually talks about us being called out to be not only peculiar people, but to be living stones and, and to be a living example of Jesus. So as we sing this song, not only join in and sing with us, I encourage you to to scan that, connect, and become a part of this great outreach and this great opportunity here at Lakeshore Church. Join with us now.
Living stones, that's what God has called each one of us to be, to be a part of his example, to be a witness, to be peculiar people. I'm just excited about this message series that we're going to journey on the next few weeks. I hope you'll get a copy of the book. I know I've downloaded my copy and I'm going to read through it as well. And I hope you will uh, join in with us and take part in all that we do throughout this series. And uh, Part of uh, what we're called to do also is to love and to care about each other. And uh, each week we always take time for, for prayer requests and to share some joys and concerns that we have on our hearts with each other. And uh, while you're watching right now, if you want to do that, 
There's information on the screen that you can uh, send those requests and send those joys to us and know that we are certainly praying and rejoicing with you as your church body, as your church family together. And uh, you can also drop it in the chat on uh, YouTube and on Facebook and certainly someone will uh, We'll get that information to the church and know that uh, you will be a part of our prayers and a part of our rejoicing as well. Uh, just a couple things that we do want to highlight this morning uh, for prayer requests. Uh, we remember Dick Marino for healing of his back. Lord, we lift him up to you right now and just ask that you'll do an amazing work in his life and just remove this pain and this discomfort that he has in the name of Jesus. And for this prayer request, we say, Lord, hear our prayers. For joys this morning, well, I've got a personal joy that I'm really excited to share with all of you. Uh, most of you know that uh, I've had a church plant here in Windsor for a number of years now, and uh, we've been downtown uh, working uh, amongst the, uh, the urban community for quite a while now. And uh, well, coming in the real near future, uh, we are going to be starting another location. We're joining forces with another church and uh, also opening a third location and uh, just overjoyed that we are uh, just being able to be used by God in this incredible way to just continue to be a part of his mission and spreading the gospel message. So keep us in your prayers, but rejoice with us this morning and throughout the next few weeks as we just prepare for all the great stuff that, uh, that God is doing here in our community as well. For this joy, we certainly say, thanks be to God. Will you join me now in the prayer that our Heavenly Father taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're always so grateful to have you joining with us for our online services each and every week. And, and please know that uh, you are certainly a part of our family, of our church family. Even if you never make it physically to the church building, we love you, we care about you, and we appreciate all that you do as a part of our worshiping family, even just here online. That is such an important thing. Thank you to those of you that are continuing to support us financially, even through these ups and downs and rough uh, seasons that we've gone through the last couple years. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, and thank you so much. If you want to join with us and worship with us in that way, as an act of worship to God. Again, there's information on the screen in front of you where you can hit up the website and you can make uh, financial donations at any time, night or day to the ministry and the work here at Lakeshore Church and know that that ministry reaches literally all around the world, not just these broadcasts, but all the things that we give to and the missions that we support as well as just the local stuff right in the community of St. Clair Shores. So thank you so much for supporting us in that way and may God richly bless you. As we leave this morning, I uh, thought we'd leave with another song. And so uh, once again, thanks for joining with us, for worshiping with us. We look forward to the next few weeks in this message series. And uh, as we go now, we leave you with a song called Sing Wherever I Go. And I don't know a better way to become a peculiar person and a person filled with God and filled with God's Holy Spirit is to practice the art of singing and rejoicing wherever we go because that will let people know that we are different, that we have the love of God inside our hearts if we can rejoice and sing wherever we go. God bless you. Have a great week.